Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you are doing well. I did not set everything up correctly today, so I have to uh, finish doing that. Let me uh, get everything configured. Hopefully you are having a spectacular morning. I can't believe I forgot to do this. This is really frustrating. <laughs> All right. Holy cow. All right. Man, I guess I need more coffee today. Anyways, welcome to Break the Cycle with DSC. I am your host. I am not a therapist, and I'm an individual much like you who's been through a stressful experience, developed some tips and techniques that help me get through it, that I share with you to help you get through your situation, get to the other side, break the cycle of abuse, and if you have kids, repair the relationship with them. Remember, only a licensed professional can diagnose somebody with a personality disorder or any issues, so be careful throwing around medical terms. If you have them, great. Focus on patterns of behavior. I mean, learn what's going on so you understand what the, the behaviors are and you know what you should do to help mitigate it, but just be careful what you go around saying. If you want to get the text notification, which I don't know if that went out, I'll have to double check, you can do that by dialing or by texting DSD Live to 844-598-0012. I'm sorry, 844-598-0012. Speaking of phone lines, the phone lines are open. You can dial in today's show at 1424-373-5483 or 1424-DSD Live. If you are outside of the United States and you don't want to spend the crazy amount of money to call in, there is a web interface. Just scroll on down, look in the description, and you'll find the information there. The other thing is, if you are new to the channel, I know we've had a lot of new people in the last few weeks, uh, and you haven't hit the subscribe button, please hit the button, ring the bell so you don't miss, miss a thing. Holy cow, I am woefully under unprepared for today, it seems. Uh, today's topic is, uh, if I can get my, get my stuff all lined up, let me do that real quick so I can remember what the heck it is that's going on today. You ever have those days where things just are a little off and you're like, just, you know, it, this, this would probably be one of those days that if I was actually going to work, I'd seriously consider just staying. <laughs> Staying home. Today's topic is uh, going to be keeping the doors open and how to not undermine your own relationship with your kids. And yeah, actually, it's in response to a caller. And I think the ca the person is calling back. So I will try to grab. First thing I want to ask is uh, uh, John Steinbeck from Bra Brainwashing Children uh, wanted me to test out a microphone that he got. I think he's just doing it to try to make me make me uh, regret my life decisions. So that's why you guys, if you're watching this, see a uh, see a different microphone. So my question is, is if, are the audio levels OK or is everything sound OK? So if everything's good to go, let me know and we'll go from there. One other thing I'm going to do before I grab the caller is uh, I forgot to pull up part of the chat so that I can easily see when uh, Super chats and stuff happen, uh, or if they happen. Oh, and I have my audio so set to the wrong through. spot. So let me do this real quick. All right. And I'm sorry, guys. Sometimes I annoy myself. All right. Just got to pop this out and move this here and close this there. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. All right. So to get everything back to normal. And... Oh, wow, we actually have two calls already. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the first one in area code 718. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, welcome back. Thanks again. Yeah, I'm glad you called. Um, yes, I'm glad you're there. Um, I'll be quick for your audience and you. Child, My child has been diagnosed with PA, parental alienation. Um, the visitation since he was... since the child was 10, has been violated. The child has made, been made anxious before all visits. 
uh, visits were uh, halted or stopped because the other parent said there was homework or something. Child encouraged not to stay with me, violated all weekends. Um, so the child was never, I, I never got to know the child in a good way. Right. Uh, to further the alienation, uh, I was not included in college finances, loans, or scholarships. Uh, X or the son or the child is uh, scared to reveal the bursar's office, so I can't even pay for half the child's education. Wow. Um, uh, I was asked by uh, the ex and a psychiatrist she had to wait while son was in therapy. I largely did this. Don't call me a fool. Uh, forced to take that particular MD in an agreement, and she paid for him, and he was beholding. The alienation got worse, and the psychiatrist denied it. The mother would never discuss it, allowance, discuss that allowance or anything. Child seems scared of me, um, uh, tells me things I did, which are either not true or are normal parental things, very much twisted to make me look bad. So that's basically where I am. And how old is uh, how did you, how old is very, your is your child? The child is eighteen. The child just started college. Um, I can't by by agreement, which is great. I should pay half his college, right? Which I am not being allowed to do to show that that the ex is paying for his college, not me. Meanwhile, I still have to pay her the support, so she's getting the money out of that. Right. So, and, and when was the last time you saw your son? About a year ago. And but prior to that, I mean, I know it progressively got worse, but at, did it at some point, did you guys have a decent relationship? We had a relationship where I would see him every week and for dinner once a week. Uh, but the, but the ex, always made it difficult, always hyped the child before, uh, before the meeting, uh, would call during the meeting about, you know, he had homework, uh, would, uh, do other things that are along that, that way. It was not always given, you know, his overnight stuff and things like that. Everything to sabotage. Right. Man, I mean, you're kind of in the situation now where you just have to leave the door open basically i think i kind of mentioned that yesterday and wait right. f- wait for your son to interact with you not meaning that you just completely don't do anything you know do measured i actually to be honest i was i was just well i was talking to a person yesterday i'll be a little vague on the details and they had had some uh rough times with their adult son to the point that they had, had a falling out and it seemed like the relationship was completely over. And the person had made their peace with it, you know, was leaving the door open in case something changed, but, but uh, pretty much is, you know, was looking back going, okay, well, I tried everything I could and it didn't work. And then basically, and then I, you know, I heard that about maybe a year ago and just the other day or just yesterday got a call from the person who said he happened to reach out to his son. They were able to go meet up and talk, have a, have a good conversation. And now their relationships, I mean, it's not completely repaired, but the door has been open. They're starting, you know, they're actually now having some communication and things are starting to progress in a positive way. I mean, that's really your, your, the situation you're in now, that's your course of action is just, you know, give him some space and, and try to, um, engage with him to see if one of those times is going to open the door and allow you guys to talk. Well, maybe I have to do that. Um, I know, and I could see, and it's been diagnosed that he has severe issues related to the alienation. Of course. Which often happens. Oh yeah. I'm trying to help him, but you know, he won't receive that help. Um, so, you know, well, if the thing, the problem, yeah, the problem is though, is that when we start pushing and if somebody's already having an issue, it, it's, I mean, it's like this, it's like if you, if you and I are friends and we're having an argument and I'm, 
and I'm like, hey, man, give me, you know, come on, let's talk or whatever. And you're just frustrated and I'm pushing you to make a decision. Most of the time, people, especially under stress, are going to the right. easiest decision is to say, dude, we're done. I'm not, you know, look, you know, we're not friends anymore. Right. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk from you. And it's not even so much that that that's really what you want. It's just you get caught in a situation or the person gets caught right. in a situation that that's their only out. So, you know, what I would say is you've, you've tried things thus far, right? And, they ha and, and for the most part, they haven't worked because you're in the situation you're in now. So now start right. modifying that strategy and trying different things. You, you've already tried a right. bunch of different things that, that, like I just said, aren't working. So give yourself a pause, rethink some things, try some things, that, you know, and then try a few different things to see, okay, well, maybe this right. will work. And it's, un it's unfortunate because okay. it's not fast, right? I mean, we, we hope or we want, especially when it comes to our kids, we don't want to lose any more time. So in this situation is, it's right. like you got to look at it, not that you're losing more time. It's like, how, do you, you, how can you make better decisions to make this recovery process potentially smaller? Right. Be because most of I the... Should say, yeah, I'm go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I want to hear you. No, I should say, um, I'm a licensed teacher. Okay. I teach over 160 kids a day in a ghetto. I can relate to those kids as right. best as anyone can. But my son has been cut off. I, my background has been searched. I'm not someone that's going to hurt a child. Right. But this is, this is amazing. This is just killing. Well, and the, the thing is, especially, and you probably can understand this, I'm sure if you work with, with that type of community of kids, they'll talk to you because they don't have the emotional connection. But maybe that same conversation that they'll have with you, they won't have with their own parents or there are somebody else in their life because there's all those emotional oh, stuff that. with it. So I, I mean, know that's a fact. Yeah. I mean, so it, it doesn't mean that, that all is lost. It just means it's going to take more time to, to make it work. I mean, I'll, I'll use my example okay. of, of my relationship with my own dad. I, for the longest time, had a very estranged relationship with him because I believed all the, all the crap that was being told to me. I, uh, uh, I thought that he was a different person. And the problem is, is every time I talked to him, he would reinforce it accidentally. By his actions, his decisions, his what method of communication, yeah. my mom was able to spin things in a way to where every time he basically opened his mouth, it right. reinforced what she, the, the lies that she was telling me. I always you know, wanted I to, I, this, well, let me sorry. just finish this. I no, always ahead, wanted ahead, a relationship ahead, with my dad. I would come back to the trough, yeah. so to speak, every once in a while to see if things were different. And there were times where it was a long, uh, you know, a long stretch. And then as, I mean, the sad part is, is once you start to get older, you know, you, life gets in the way. You start, uh, right. you know, I mean, you just have school, you have friends, the you have girlfriends. You, with school, yeah. right. So it's just, the thing is, is, what I'm worried about in your situation is, is I'm, I'm worried that you've tried so much and you keep reaching out. More than likely what's happening is, and this is a guess, right? I mean, this, I don't know for sure, but my, my assumption is, is that it might be. he is, he's still under the spell of his mom, but you're so, you know, present, I guess, or uh, to where it isn't giving right. him a time right. to, to really breathe on it. And you know, I mean, okay. he, he even if he un, un, even if deep down he realizes that maybe he was lied to, that's still really hard for someone to accept. Because at some point, the same thing with me. At some point, he's going to have an epiphany, just like I did, where you know you're sitting in your house and you're you're realizing your life experience is now mirroring your father's, and you're like, holy crap, I now understand. You know, and and the thing is, is I don't yeah. want you to have to wait to that point. And the, so the, there's right. things that you can do. There's things that my own father could have done years before that would have repaired the relationship and switched things around. And he just I, didn't know I how to do, do it. Anything, you know. Right. Right. So that would be. So you're saying yeah, modify go ahead. my behavior, stop pushing. Yeah. Yeah, and just be very careful. I mean, like I would say every once in a while, like I mentioned yesterday, would, to reach out just to you know, just so he knows you're thinking about him. But it has to be very. You know, it ha you have to really think about how the communication right. is going to be received, right? Because a lot of people will be like, right. you know, hey, I'm think I, I just I drove by such and such a place, 
and it reminded me of whenever we were, we, you know, when, when you were younger and we would go there. Right. Well, that seems, that seems innocent enough, but to a person who is in the middle of this, that can seem like you're trying to get, like if I was your son, I'd be like, man, why is this guy trying to guilt me? Yeah, okay, we had, that doesn't negate, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's, you, you got to be very cautious right. of your communications. You know, I mean, like, for instance, you know, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I asked the psychiatrist that was treating him that was hired by his mother what I could do to help alleviate this alienation and what I shouldn't do to make him further reject me. Right. But I was not told the thing. I try to complain about it, but it's very hard in the courts with lawyers or the state medical boards to really get any action on this. It's very hard. Right. I honestly, what, what you need, your best course of action on this, since you're kind of at a loss is the, as soon as you can have an opportunity to talk to your kid, to your son would be to say, look, I know, I'll, you know, something along these lines, I know I've made a lot of mistakes you know, maybe I don't get it, but I want to get it because you're important to me and I want us to have a relationship. I want right. to be in your life. So look, I'm going to sit here and I want you to tell me, you know, be honest. What is, what have I, you know, what have, what is, what have I done that's bothering you? And then let him, you know, let him say it. Right. I mean, like I, I think we were talking about yesterday, Oftentimes, because yeah. I mean, we're living it, right? I mean, so it's stressful. It's it's tense. It's it, you know, there's there. It's a multifaceted right. story. And when someone says, "Well, Dad, you were never around," you know, like I like say the college thing, because I know that's a, a, an issue for you. If he's like, "Well, you wouldn't even pay for my college," and and you can't that's jump, what he thinks. right? Well, and the problem is, is if you start jumping in and say, "But I've tried. I've I've done this. I've done that," and it's like, "Oh yeah, whatever." Mommy says, you know, mom says right. you always lie anyways, and you never come through, right? See, and so you, what you need is, is you need to let him speak and listen to what he's saying right. and then flip around it, right? So for instance, let's just scenario this for a minute. So we go through that conversation and, you know, that's what he says. He says, you know, you don't do anything like that. If you go right. in and you start defending yourself, he's going to shut down because that's what he's expecting. If you just let him say it and you're like, you know what? I really want to be able to help. What can I do to fix it? What, what could, what can, you know, what, what, what do I need to do? And if he says, if he says you need to be on the loans, right? Which he probably won't, but let's say, let's say hypothetically he did. Then you say, okay, how do we do it? Right? So now what you're doing is you're, you're putting it back in his court, right. letting him make a decision. And when he goes to his mom or goes to the school and they say, oh yeah, sure. Your dad can, I mean, yeah, you can have someone else on here. Not a big deal. And then he basically you're you're setting up an opportunity for for the other parent to basically take you know to to kind of reverse the tide and fall for their for, fall for your trap instead of the other way around. But do you see the difference on that? Because I'm pretty sure I know how. I mean, I I can guess how you did it before. It's like, look, I'm, I'm you don't understand everything. I've tried. I've I've done all this stuff to try to do it, and it just boom shuts down. It's like he's not even listening yeah, to me. Yeah, well, I tried plain I tried yeah. plain logic. And very, I was very uh, gentle with him. I know how to do that. I was taught how to do that, at, you know, for the school kids. But uh, I obviously am causing him, you know, a rejection. Or something. Right. I don't know. See, and that's a, but see, it's it's crazy. I mean, I've, I'm sure most everyone's seen this with their own kids. I mean, I've even said stuff to my kids, you know, not necessarily about this stuff. And it's like, yeah, whatever, you know, they don't believe dad, but someone else will tell them the exact same thing. And then it's like an epiphany, right? I mean, it's like, it, 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 for yeah. whatever it is, there's a, a, a thing to where you start to discount people who you trust or you should trust that has your best interest at heart and you just don't believe it. But, you know, I mean, yeah. the, the situation you're in, it's going to take some time. I think if you, if you try to tweak how you try to interact with them, you'll probably start to see some results. You just have to be really careful because if you start to see results and then you revert back, like let's say you you think, okay, things are going better, so now I can sit and tell him everything that happened. You gotta be really careful because right. there's gonna it's gonna take time for him to build trust back up with you to be able to feel right. comfortable to have more open conversations. Right now, right. all you want is you want you want the words at least coming towards you. And that's that's the key. Build okay. build that up to where you can start talking. 
I mean, that's even if you if you guys have the uh, the past um, uh, experience or whatever to where you would just have dinner. Now that he's older and he's going to university, if he's physically going, you know, just say, hey, I mean, like I would ping him every so often. Say, hey, I'm in the area. Let's, uh, you know, let's go get a. He's he's in he's a few states away now. Okay, well, that makes it a little bit more complicated. Do you ever go yeah. to that state? Um, you know, I said, Ethan, I haven't seen, well, gosh, I haven't seen you in, in, in a year. Can I stop by? He said he would quit school if I did. <sighs> yeah, it's just going to take time. So, yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't completely give up, I, but... You know. I have never hit this child. I have not humiliated the child. And it's and and believe it or not, the mother is a mental health professional. She oh, that doesn't surprise exactly me. What she did. Oh yeah. Yeah, and and she has cred, uh, credibility so that uh um yes. you know, it's yes. it's easy People for her to you know, oh, her well, and things she knows, yeah. right. Oh yeah, well she obviously wouldn't lie about any of this. This must be more severe. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's evil. It's what these people will do, and then especially the educated ones who have, uh, you know, more letters behind their name. It's uh, it's it's cruel. Right. It's evil. It's destructive, and people should be able to see that okay. it's that there's that there's something wrong. You know, a ch- un- unless you did something right. so egregious, there's no reason for you, for a child to hate their other parent and never want to see them, unless some you know unless there's I something did. there, right? I did not. I did not. You don't know me from a hole in the head, but I did not. But he has been led to think this. Right. I have heard him say things, and I'm thinking, where where in the world does he get this? Right. I'll just Let me just go back before we finish this up. That other story sure. that I was telling you about, the... Kind of the same. Sure, I'm sorry, I spoke no, too much. no, no, you're fine. You're fine. I just want to give you a little bit of, right. of hope. And that is, is that when I talked to that other in, yeah. individual about his situation, you know, last year, that's the same type of stuff he was getting. I hate you, dad. I never want to be around you. I want to change my name. I mean, right. just really vitriolic right. stuff, you know, and then a year later, they're able to have a conversation and now they're, the relationship's different, right? People say things under right. duress and under stress and lash out that sometimes they don't mean. So what I'm saying is, is right. you know, when I talked to this guy months ago, it really seemed like, like he had exhausted all options and he thought so too. Right. And, you know, hadn't talked to his son in a long time. And basically literally what he ended up doing was texting him from a different phone because he was blocked on everything else, even though his son uh, said yeah. that wasn't the case. And was like, hey, I'm in town. Um, you know, maybe we right. could go get something to eat. And they did, and it worked out okay. And they're they're, you know, the door's been open. That so that's the thing. Just give him give him some space. I mean, you don't want to be like, okay, let me let me text him every every week or something. You know, give him some time. Right. And then whenever um you know, I, I would say, think about, you know, what could you say to where it wouldn't be perceived, you know, just so that he knows you're thinking of him, but it doesn't come across as guilt because that just, that's not going to help you. And, uh, and it's got to just be like, okay. Hey, you know, I, um, was, was thinking about you today. I hope you're okay. Hope everything's going good. Hopefully, hopefully school's going good. And like, leave it at that. Right. Cause that's, I mean, just okay. something, just something very benign and then set a pattern up to where you're not like, you know, hey, I haven't seen you in forever. Uh, would really love to have an opportunity to see you, right? Because I mean, right there, it's like if if it's the other person, it makes it harder for an opening, right? Because you're already in a situation right. to where it's, you know, you feel guilty about it, you know. And then the way you deal with that, right. if you're not sure, is you turn it into anger. So you just have to keep it right. very benign and just keep it like you know, you know, put something out there so you know that that you haven't written him off. And just be very. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, how how you maybe you could try yes, that? I I I I get that. You know, might as well try it. Uh, I thank you yeah. for the advice. I, you know, you know, I I defer to logic, but logic is not what's playing here. Well, technically, 
what I was just talking about kind of follows logic, right? It's taking more information in, understanding yeah. your situation, understanding your enemy, right. your ex, and understanding the influence they have, and now you're using a systematic right. approach to try to approach it. So you can still use logic. Right. It's just you got to modify it not All for... Right. I, I cause, see what... Because, see, you're yeah, not convincing see. you, you're convincing him. And I, I talked about that yeah, in another right. video the other day, that part of the problem is is we tend to, to look at things in a situation on how it would, how we would perceive it, how we would, like the argument is like, okay, right. if I came to you and gave you that argument, it would work on you. I'm, maybe right. I just confused myself. But right. I mean, like if you're trying to do it to yourself, you know what would work on you. And you've tried it with your son and it doesn't work. Right. So now you have to find out what works on him. You understand? Right. Yes. So just, I would, uh, I would take a pause. I mean, don't, don't connect it. Don't, you know, don't try to contact him in the next couple of days or anything. And then just think through that, maybe right. make some notes on it and then try something and don't expect. And, and let me just throw this out here. Don't expect that that first right. try is going to be successful. What you're going to, now what you're no. doing is you're trying to build a pattern to show that, Hey, my dad's doing something right. different. You know, I always expected him to, to lead in with, with uh, stuff that's trying to make me feel guilty or trying to, you know, trying to guilt trip me into seeing him. And now you're not doing that. Well, you see what I'm saying? Okay. Yes, I do. So give that a go. All right. Well, I'm glad you yep. called back because now we had a little, I mean, we've been doing, we've, right. we've had more time instead of, instead of three minutes, I think we've talked for about 20 minutes. So that's, um, I'm glad we had more time. <laughs> Thank you for your advice. I hope it helps someone else out there. I hope it helps you too. All right. Talk to you later. Okay. You know, and see, that was actually, I mean, so the whole topic for today was supposed to be keep, you know, to keep, keep the door open and how not to undermine your relationship. I said relationships in the title of this thing, but I mean, it's, it's primarily, I mean, for that call, we're talking about kids. It's really, really tough. You know what, before I, before I miss it, I need to scroll back and uh, hit because there was a hold on a second. Kevin did a, uh, was that a super chat or a, yeah, super chat from, from Kevin. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, all the support always helps. And I think there was a chat. Was there? Oh, okay. Then there was a uh, Katie said, uh, uh, Update, ex-BFF friend called. She uh, she called my best friend, my parents, and got mutual friends to call me her on her uh, on the other end. She got a fake number and called 24 times. Okay, so if I remember correctly, that was the one who's uh, the lady had a fr uh, the best friend who raged at, you know, realized, oh, my God, this person's a nightmare, trying to put up some boundaries, and they are continuing to not... See, guys, here's the deal. Narcissistic people, you, you put up a, a, a wall and they want to figure out how to get around it. So uh, I would say, Casey, I don't know what else you've, you've, maybe you've said something else. Just stay strong, stay on, you know, keep your boundaries up. You know, I kind of like brace for impact. More shenanigans will happen for a while. Uh, and let me see what else. I think there was a, I'm trying to, trying to look. I thought there was a new channel member. Was there two members? I'm trying, I'm trying to figure this. I'm trying to look through all my stuff. Sorry. Oh, okay. So Casey became a member. So thank you so much for that. And let's see. And Alone, um, alone Parent R is now a channel member. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Okay. So there is another call. Let's see. That last uh, caller. To be able to say, okay, obviously my, you know, me trying to explain something in a way that would make sense to me isn't working. So how do I flip it around? What I ended up having to do in my situation, which was really helpful, is I met with the ther kids therapist and uh, our psych uh, psychiatrist, for whatever reason, she was taking him to a psychiatrist who also had a therapist in the office. But but anyways, the, the initial conversation was, well, your son has an estranged relationship with his biological father. And I'm like, hey, dumbass, that's me, right? I didn't say that, but I'm like, wow, that's interesting. And, uh, I'm, and I was trying to talk with him, and it was apparent that he was basically completely on board with that I was the problem. And I said, okay, let me ask you this, Mr. Psychiatrist. 
The whole purpose of this is to help the child deal with the the estrangement of their other parent, correct? Yes. That other parent is me, correct? Yes. Okay. So, what do I have to do to help in this process? I'm like, I have a therapist. I will sign, you know, what do I have to do so that you guys can talk to her so that if I'm doing something that I just don't get, that we can work on it? Because that's the goal, right? The goal is to repair the estranged relationship with the child. That is true. Okay. You know what I mean? So I, I flipped the switch. Instead of saying, you're wrong, we don't have this. And I did at one point because I, I came in with a pile of paperwork. I walked in. I'm like, hey, have you seen this? This is the custody evaluation. Have you seen this? No. You need to read this. Here, have a copy of this. Then I came up with another thing. And I said, have you seen this? My son has uh, an individual education plan because he has a disability. And I said, have you seen this? And he goes, no. And I said, well, you need to read this too because the teachers have a profile of uh, my son on here and it contradicts what you're saying. And he's like, well, I don't need to read, you know. So that's what I, so I said. And he kind of was like, well, I don't, I don't need to read all that. You know, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. Anyways, so, uh, and then I was like, you know, the patterns of behavior you're talking about, the, per the kid that you're describing is not the kid that I have at my house. And finally, I was like, look, how about, you know, maybe I should start bringing him to some of these appointments because so far it's only been the mom and I'm pretty sure they're being riled up the entire time. So he finally agreed to that. And after a few things of taking, taking him to the appointment, the, the, psych uh, the therapist basically said to me, you don't need to keep bringing him. It's, we, we, we get it. It's not, you know, it's not you. Prior to that point, it was all me. So you just had to be careful how you approach it. And like I was talking with the other caller, you cannot keep lathering and, uh, you know, lather, rinse and repeat on the same behaviors are the same, not behaviors, the same techniques that aren't giving you results. If you are trying something, let me, let me, let me, here, let me punch in. Let me make this crystal clear. If you are trying something and the results continually are the same and are not helping you, you have to try something different. You have to take a break and rethink what you're doing. Doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that even my, my technique that I work or that I, that I spout out or I try to encourage you guys to do is going to be the cure-all. But if what you're doing right now doesn't work, try option two. And then if option two is not getting you results, try option three. You start, you know, you, you lather, rinse, and, or actually, let me go back to that. Not lather, rinse, and repeat because that's just doing the same thing. It's a technique that I often talk about that we that I do at work for where I work, and it's fly, fix, fly. We test aircraft. You you deploy a, an aircraft, an airframe, you fly it, you take measurements, you look at it, and it's like, okay, I expected X to happen. And if X happened, great, that worked. Now you can try to extend it to, to, to you know, like in a relationship thing, you know, what can you do next to try to make it better? So you make a change or you try to implement a new feature or whatever, right? You try to, on the, on the, on the uh, aircraft side of things. And then if something doesn't work, then you go back and you modify it and you try again. But guys, if you are beating your head against the wall, doing the same thing over and over again, and it's not getting you anywhere, you have to take a, you have to take a pause and look at things differently. All right, so let me look. Okay, so as Shane had also said, I had the same experience. Ex refused to attend or take the kids to the court. A reportable therapist, but would take, uh, but would manipulate a therapist not involved in the case to provide letters to the court. Yeah, that sounds about right. You know, the thing is, if you have a good attorney and you're like, well, wait a minute, you were ordered to go here and you didn't go there. I've seen that where people, I remember talking to a gentleman where something like that happened. They had a, an evaluator who said something against the, the mom and they came into court with somebody completely different. And the judge is like, I'm not listening to this. We paid for, we did, you know, person A. Now you're coming in with person B. 
that's not who you were directed to go to. That is irrelevant. I'm not even going to look at it. Sorry, I keep banging the mic. I got to get used to it being on this side. All right, so let me now go to the other phone. Sorry, the guy's been on hold for a while. Let me uh, pull this in. Hello, and welcome back to the show. Wayne, how are you? I'm good. How you doing, man? I'm hanging in there. I was actually the timing of that previous caller was perfect because, you know, I'm like you and like many of us, I'm dealing with a large variety of issues. The one that's kind of rearing its head these days is parental alienation. Yeah. And um, it was, you know, I'm, I'm on the other end of it where it's just started to take hold. And it's just would probably be a really interesting contrast to think of like, you know, obviously I'm emotionally caught up in it, but you try to look at this you know, as, a, as a scientist sometimes if you can solve it. Right. Um, and just so you don't have to get so emotionally invested in it or you, you go nuts. Um, but um, like it used to make me crazy. Now I can look at more as a scientist. And the, what I'm saying is it's just really interesting to see how, you know, if you don't fix it, you know, there's an opportunity to fix it. So I'm not saying it's all on us. It's, you know, it's the core the system i mean when you know when a mental health professional can manipulate the system it's clear that there's a problem with that system yeah true you know, that, that that last guy's wife was a mental health professional i mean not you know she's supposed there's you know the, the system is broken yeah and the only reason we're the only reason we're figuring this out is because of people with unique problems can get together in the setting called the internet and find these problems i mean before youtube and the internet and really YouTube now because it's brought these communities to life. You know, people couldn't figure this out. And, and the information now is accelerating. The learning is accelerating because, you know, we're at the beginning stages of this. It's, it's, it's sort of, a, there's many, many revolutions going on for all kinds of issues related to health and psychology and science. Yeah. And, and it's the information that's yeah. really helping. And, and we're at the beginning of this. And it's just important to remember that we need to be the all-stars. We need, we need to be the better than anybody. Because in, in 10 years, I find it impossible to believe that because of what's happening with these communities, it won't eventually impact how the judges think and how everyone thinks. And I think that's happening. I think it's happening. Yeah. But in the meantime, we need to be really good. We need to be perfect. Like, you need to be an expert in parental alienation. <laughs> we all need to be experts in it. Like, the way you're coaching this guy is great, but, like, he's not doing horribly. He, the system is wrong no more than anything. But, yeah, now he has to be perfect. He has to manage yeah. it perfectly. Yeah, if the I, system yeah. is better, it would have kicked in much sooner. It would have kicked in much sooner and helped him. Right. You know, so you know you're absolutely right, man. And, and it's, it's yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just, and, and you're right. I mean, it's you, you were thrust into a situation that we never even would have never signed up for. The most precious thing that's important to us is sitting on the is you know is on the table our the relationship with our child, and we're scared to death that we're going to make a mistake and make it worse, and we're hoping that the system is going to recognize that hey this is just a you know this is a, a normal person who just wants to be a parent and be involved in their li their kids' lives how do we make you know how do we empower that to happen and the exact opposite is what's happening. Because of greed yeah. and money and, and, and even if, manipulation. It's just so hard. I mean, you can admit how you made mistakes. And this other guy's a teacher and he makes mistakes. And we all, you know, I've read all the books and watched all the videos and I make mistakes all the time with it. It's, it's very difficult. It's, it's the yeah. traps that are set by this manipulation are just really tricky. Just double bind your yeah. expression. Not that you created the term, but it's just a great expression to use here. Just we're thrilled with double binds, especially with alienation. Like right now, I'll get into a little bit of an update. So we're coming into court, and she was, you know, she's saying the kids don't want to come, and the judge is literally sending her emails. Which is, you know, the judge's assistant saying, "You need to, you know, send the kids." And um, and she's like ignoring him. And she's saying, "Well, the kids don't want to come, and I, we're we're gonna." We're going to hear it out, but like you know, we need to we need to be able to go into a trial and and really get this resolved and get all the details on the table. Well, so that, um, 
you know. And I would say the the reality with what you're saying is is she's she's starting to her her story is starting to implode. When you have the the judge trying to get her to compel yeah. to follow the court order, that means she's starting to fall apart. And I mean, the good part about it is, uh, typically these people, when they're in control, it's easier for them to maintain their illusion. But when it starts falling apart, they start to fall apart like we would. You know, I mean, so just you, now you're yeah, in that mode where you just need to let, let her destroy herself to hopefully finally get some help through the system like you were just talking about. But my God, the problem is, is what... My lawyer and I feel, go ahead. Yeah, my lawyer and I feel like she's doing exactly what you're saying. That yeah. she's imploding. Yeah. That, you know, he uses the word suicide and self-destruct. And, you know, she just, you know, she's just doing things that make no sense. Just completely inconsistent. Right. The kids are saying they don't want to come. Oh, now they want to come because they say a friend will come. Um, okay, so they don't want to see me, but they're okay seeing me when it's a friend. Like, there's no consistency right. to it. There's no, and there's no reason. I, I talked to the kid's therapist, and it's like they're giving me the same kinds of things that the kids give me. You know, frivolous stuff, no reason. And, um, you know, I did make a mistake, you know, to talk about mistakes we make. You know, my, my daughter came over. My kids were over here. I talked to my daughter about her not wanting to come over, and what it was about. And I just, I think the whole conversation, I just couldn't have had it. I just think all it did was just reinforce things and, you know, sitting her down and saying, you know, well, you have to come. I mean, I wanted to hear her out, I guess, you know, I try to focus on what we can do to have a good time, what was on her mind. And, you know, and she said she wanted to remodel the room. So we remodeled the room, you know, I, I think I handled it well. It's just so hard to know, you know, the bottom line is you, you don't want to emphasize it too much. Yeah, you want to keep it light. You want to shift things that you can change. So, like when she says, "Yeah, I want to remodel the room." Great, let's talk about. That. We went online. She was like obsessed with remodeling the room. Like she, her mom has a lot more money, and so you know the place is just a lot nicer. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'm like, is she getting here from somewhere else that you know there's something wrong with this place? And she never was obsessed with how it looked before, and this is coming on suddenly. She's like, we have to remodel it. We have to remodel. It. And she actually bring, even brings it up on the phone before she comes over. And my kids never call me except to tell me they don't want to see me. Right. That's the only time they hear from me. And I started, I stopped taking the phone call because it's just two minutes before pickup. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And all, cause all it's doing is making her feel justified because they're saying it and, and it's creating oh, yeah. tension. Right. Yeah, and exactly. You, know, I have to the phone with them. you have to come, but all that does is create more tension. So what's the point? I don't think they want to talk to me at that point. What is compelling them to call? Oh, because their mom know. is their mom's forcing the issue. I've I've had that happen with mine. We've had my kids. Uh, they even did it on a voicemail, which was even perfect. We, we, it only happened with one of them. All the other things were in person that they didn't want me to do. But but yeah, it, it's you know the kids are put in the middle, and it's like if they don't do it, then they know they're gonna they're, they're gonna have to pay uh, the cost with their mom. It's psychological abuse. The thing is, is just keep, I mean, your, your ex is already destroying herself. The court's already starting to see it. Um, you know, you're now at the point where you just kind of have to let it play out. I would actually take the calls and uh, just use it as a documentation point to say, you know, five minutes before uh, the, the child's calling saying, I don't want to come, right? I mean, because at the end of the day, the judge is going to say, who's the, who's the parent? You know, the kids aren't deciding this. The court order didn't say that they get to decide that but you. That's what the judge, was the judge was emailing her after, right. you know, the, my lawyer was presenting. They're not coming. He's like, you know, they don't, they don't decide, you know, you right. take them. Yeah. No, um, she's, she's, she's torpedoing herself to a point that you could potentially get custody depending on how this goes. So just, you know. That's what my lawyer said. Yeah. He might be custody and that might be the whole thing around. But she has a very good lawyer. A very good, powerful lawyer. Well, people who've had very good, powerful lawyers still end up, you know, going to jail and losing, right? I mean, it's it's, you know, the the, yeah. the a very good, no, powerful lawyer, I mean, I have, I have the, the client needs to listen to what the hell. I mean, listen to the advice. And I would imagine that the uh, her very powerful lawyer is probably not advising her to violate what the judge is saying and get on the judge's bad side. I mean, I mean, unless I'm wrong. I mean, unless well, you know. Saying that the kids 
don't want to come. And he's like, unless they are physically resisting. And she never said they were physically resisting before, but now she's saying they're physically resisting. So there's going to be a high bar for her to really. And yeah. she might be, maybe her lawyer can pull this off. There's going to be a high bar, but there is an out here. And the out is that the kids are physically resisting. And then it could just extend things. And now we need a forensic to get to the bottom of it. And it takes me another year to resolve. And now I'm not seeing my kid. Um, so that's, that's the bad, the worst case scenario. I don't think that they can ever justify to just keep the kids from me, but there's just a lot of shenanigans. And that's all it is. A lot of time, that's all it's about. It's about shenanigans that keep you from your kids until it's resolved. I was, I had limited time with my kids for two years because of lies said against me. Right. And it took two years to resolve, you know, and did I do anything wrong? No. And did she win? No, but it took two years. I had oh, limited I know. time for two years. That's because the system is so slow. Well, and hopefully what your attorney can do yeah. is turn around and use that and say, look, you know, my client has missed out on, you know, two to five years of time with the kids. This needs to change and try to make a case or make an argument saying, look, dad needs to have full custody now. Mom can have visitation. So there needs to be parity in it. Not to say that that will work, but with everything right. she's doing, it's setting it up. <laughs> The, the stage is being set to where you, that argument has more and more credibility. You, understand, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and it's the slowness of the court that actually makes everything more dramatic. They don't really want to hear about it. But as things move slowly, it just means more damage is being created in these right. situations. And, you know, and so it just it just makes everything more extreme and you know, they need to make some extreme decisions. Well, now. Let, me, let me ask you this, man. Cause uh, you yeah. sound, you sound still really, I mean, you sound down, but as we're talking, it sounds like things are really starting to shift your way. I mean, is, are you, are you okay? Are you feeling, I mean, I, I get the fact that this is just incredibly emotionally draining and it's just, we shouldn't even have to deal with this. I've been here before where I've been here before where I thought that there's no way that she can win. And I just was all geared up. And yeah. That's how I felt when we first went into court in 2016. And um, and then I ended up in court, and the judge just reamed me five different ways because all the things she said about me were lies. Right. So logically, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do great. How could she get away with this? I was nervous. But, you know, after going through that, going into a court, having a judge yell at me for things I never did, you know, and having her look like, you know, Miss Christine, you know, I could do no wrong when she's manipulating and pulling all the strings behind the curtain. Right. You know, and to go through that, it's traumatizing. It is. You know, yeah. and then miss your kids, yeah, you lose your kids. And I did lose a lot of time. And now she was looking for more. I mean, the good news is that it didn't get as, but she was seeking that and already based on the fact that those lies were never really challenged and, and even... You know, so I, I mean, you ask me if I'm okay. No, I'm 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 not okay. I think once you've been through the system and you've been, you know, screwed, it's 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 very hard to recover from that. You know, and yeah. I mean, what happened in court? These emails that the judge has sent recently has made me feel better, but that was the judge's assistant. We haven't seen the actual judge. He's known to be fair but temperamental, and um, you know, who 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 knows what right. he's going to say? You know, maybe he'll remember angry at me in the past for things I never did. You know, how can they keep track of all the details? You know, why is there there's so much emotion from these judges when they can't possibly even remember everything? Like, you know, and keep track of all the details and they're getting played. Right. So it does the system is just very, very, very bad. So when you ask me if I'm stressed, yeah, you just don't want to be in this system. Right, exactly. Nobody wants to be in this system. It's a horrible system. Even if you're totally I never did anything before. And yeah, am I more justified now? Is she, is she really gone off over the edge? Yeah, but I thought she went over the edge before, you know, and, and it didn't help me. And and, and I and she had. She, everything was based on lies. I had three mental health professionals turn against me. And even recently, our parenting coordinator submitted affidavits against me. This is how manipulate. I mean, my ex is probably on, you know on on the high end in terms of her ability to manipulate. But these people are generally very manipulative. Yeah, very true. 
You know, they're, they're dangerous people because at the end of the day, they're harming these children, you know. I know. And then we feel helpless about it. And you're trying to navigate a system that should be there to help you and not hurt and not add extra roadblocks into it. But unfortunately, that's what happens. But dude, it's it really sounds like she's starting to implode on herself. And, you know, you're getting towards the the other side of this. It's just I mean, it just sucks that it doesn't ever stop. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's, um, you know, yeah. About uh, ten days away, we'll see what happens. And right. um, you know, I I don't have a lot of faith in the system. You know, I I just don't. Right. I don't have a lot of faith in it at all. I live in a state, probably one of the worst states, though, in terms of the system we have in my state. And it's a state by state thing. You know, you're in yeah. California. Yeah, it's really it's really it's weird bad, to think that I'm I'm actually initially I was scared about being going through this in California. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, uh, after hearing other people's stories, I'm actually kind of glad. And I would have never expected that. I figured yeah, California was one of the worst. That. No, it's not, actually. And I live, I live in a state that's supposed to be, quote, progressive with a lot of liberal folks. But it doesn't matter. It, it has actually nothing to do with political lines. It's, just, it's almost like dumb luck. Yeah. I think Kentucky has the best you know, shared parenting legislation that's actually enforced in the, in the country. True, true. Pretty sure Kentucky is that. I think they were the first ones. I'm not, I could be wrong, but I think they were the first ones that passed that equal shared parenting bill. I know it's starting to move to other places, yeah. but, but all right, well, hang in but there, man. I mean, you got, before. you got a few more, what do you say about a 10 more days before you go back? Um, you know, just try to hunker down and, yeah. and see what happens next. Unfortunately, yeah. that's all we can do. Well, no, that's not true. You, you're, you, you, there's, there is more that you can do, and you're doing it, right? You're documenting what's going on. You're trying to follow a court order. You're giving your ex the opportunity, effectively, to undermine herself and just, you know, get the best thing, best, best group of evidence in there. I mean, the fact, again, that, that, the, that the judge's clerk, or whatever you call it, is basically trying to remind the other party, Hey, you need to stop doing this. Uh, if you guys walk in and she's still doing it, I mean, probably the, her best case scenario would be right before you guys go in to start letting the kids come over again, just so that it's like, Oh, well now she's done it. Right. So she screwed with you the entire time and then started to comply after, but just keep showing the patterns of behavior. Yeah. Patterns, yeah. That wouldn't be enough at this point. The patterns over the last few weeks has been horrible. Yeah. I mean, I was supposed to see them on Tuesday. I didn't see them either. Right. Day. I mean, it's, 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 but it's not consistent. It, it, there's still, it's all over the place. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, ultimately, I don't know. I, yeah. I think that the point I was making earlier, just to come back to something the way we can feel good about is the, 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 the tide is shifting, you know, even if you can't help yourself just to know that the, this issue can only can't get any worse it's only getting better over time and it's, and it's about information and education yeah and you know as small communities get together on uh, things like youtube you know you've been around for four years that's really a fraction of time in, in the history of parental alienation right yeah, you're true. you're a big contributor to helping to turn this around you know it's channels like this people like this content like this that really starts bringing the issue up and, um, and, and it's a wave, it's a tidal wave. It's a lot bigger than any little group lobbying the government. It's, it's, it's millions of people that eventually get exposed to this because it's just like water. It just finds its way into everywhere. Like you can send these links to people and it's just, a, you know, it starts to become pervasive. And, you know, and that's, that's the part that's on our side. And that's the part I'm optimistic about, even if it doesn't get there in time for me. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm sure you'll call in with an update. Uh, hang strong, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Glenn. Take care. Man, we're almost out of time, but I just want to say, you know, it, it, the, when when we get completely overwhelmed and emotionally drained on this, that's that's going to happen. It's inevitable. You know, don't make any decisions that uh, in that mindset – because we're just, you're not in the right frame of mind. 
it, it's it's so un, it's so unfortunate that we get stuck in this mode where we have to go through this and endure it, and it feels like the other person doesn't doesn't ever have to pay a cost. It's just frustrating. Uh, let me see. I know there was a few comments. Let me see if I can. Uh, there was one I wanted to try to grab before we run out of time. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, darn the luck. It scrolled up. So I was hoping to, and I'm trying to find it. Darn it. Uh, let me see what the uh, moderator had said. Um, all right. Oh, not there. Yeah. Go uh, Goose Lord. Interesting name. Said this is so draining. It really is. It's it's just enough to really just, to, and it's by design, right? They're trying to get you to basically just give up. Nikki says it's about money. When I was running out of money, she uh, changed. She, uh, she was drama and friends with my ex's lawyer. It really opened my eyes. I was so naive. That's a, one of the biggest problems is when we don't really understand what's going on. And, you know, we're playing hopscotch and they're playing four-dimensional chess. It's uh, not a good thing. And we have to figure this out quick. And there's not a lot of people who are there to, to help. Uh, Goose Lord uh, says, my husband is the alienated parent of his two ten tween daughters, or teen twin daughters, sorry, not whatever. Ex-wife undermines him any chance she can. She is a nonstop victim, shares their conversation with the girls, and acts more like a friend than a mom. That is so common. That is such a, a reoccurring thing that they do. They don't act like a parent. They want to be the friends, which makes sense because they're emotionally, uh, their emotional maturity is delayed and stunted. So in their minds, the kids are more like their friends and they don't think about the parent parental side of things. So I'm trying to see if I can find this other comment before we run out of time. Cause it was a, a question about where, uh, you know, what if you can't, you're trying the same thing and you can't see how to do, I'm trying to remember. I wish I would have grabbed it. It's, I had it on the screen and then it scrolled off. So I can't, I can't find it. So if I'll try to go for it just real quick. All right. If, if you are in a situation to where you can't seem to th see things differently, it, it, the, the simple thing is, is if you're not getting the results that you expect or you're hoping for, you have to try something different. So the first part about that is to look at it and go, okay, you know what? I keep, like I mentioned before, I keep banging my head against the wall and I'm not making, making the progress I want. Then you have to stop and you have to say, okay, what can I try differently? Like using the examples from, well, not so much for the last caller, but definitely the first caller. If you're saying something and every time you try to have an argument or you, every time you have a try, every time you try to have a conversation with your child, it turns into an argument, then you have to say, okay, what can I try different? And you tweak it a little bit to see if you get the same results. So, and I'll, maybe I'll try to talk more about that tomorrow. I mean, that's kind of what the to topic is. And we got a little bit off on that, but, uh, um, let's see, I'm trying to look, we're almost down to, uh, the last 30 seconds. Well, I guess we are down to the last 30 seconds. So what a whirlwind show. Oh, I want to say this one last thing. Uh, there was another super chat, our super sticker. It says, uh, it's uh, thanks written on a purple heart. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate the support. If I miss anybody else, I apologize on that. Uh, on that, I do want to say thank you to the channel members. The new ones will be on tomorrow. Thank you so much for supporting the show, and we will see you on tomorrow's show.